Hi, we're here with Chris Stanis. Chris Stanis is the author of the Amazon best-selling award-winning book, Women of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. This particular book has been the Bronze Award winner for Mind, Body and Spirit in 2009 and also the finalist for Best New Nonfiction Book by USA Book News. Chris Stanis founded the Women of Wisdom Conference in 1993. For 18 years, she has directed this life-changing conference in women's spirituality. We'll hear from Chris today. Hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> yeah, good to have you here finally. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and the, this is after the busy February annual conference of WOW. Um, tell us a little bit about the background story that led you to found WOW? Well, the founding of the conference began in 1992. I had read the book The Feminine Face of God by Patricia Hopkins and Sherry Anderson. And it's a collection of stories of women from different spiritual backgrounds. Um, you know, Native American, Buddhist, Christian, Jewish, all, you know, and I just love their stories. I love stories, people's stories anyway, which I'm sure you do too, mm -hmm. what you do. And I was part of Seattle Unity Church, I was on the board, and we had, at that time, um, a weekly speaker program. Every Wednesday night there was a speaker at, at Seattle Unity Church. And I thought, um, well, I didn't realize it until I was one night driving down Aurora in Seattle, you know, the old highway. Yeah. It was late at night, and the thought just came to me like, well, it'd be great to bring women like these to Seattle and hear their stories and really experience them in person. And and then it just occurred to me, as like instantaneously, oh no, it needs to be a conference. It needs to be a week long, so there could be a gathering, so a community of women could be experienced, so women could really come together and explore this. And I just next day I. You know, it was one of those messages, like, I didn't even question. I just, I just knew that this was something I was to do. I had, before previous years, had stated my mission was to be, um, bring people together. And I didn't really know what that meant. And I didn't know that that's what I, when I had the idea of doing the, bringing these women to Seattle, or women like these women, I didn't know that that's what it was speaking about, or bringing people together. It wasn't until, you know, looking back at that, um, in the first few years that, oh, this is what it was leading to me all along. And I went to the ministers the next day and said I had this idea, and they said, go for it. And I got together a woman that I worked with. Um, we had a Seattle uh, church, um, Unity Church retreat, and I had a team of people, and I asked them to participate in planning. It was nine months in planning. <laughs> you know, it's significant of nine months birthing. And, and we were just planning a conference, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was really... And some of the things we created are still in place. We really took a lot of time looking at what we wanted to create and have for women and what our purpose was and, and what our goals were and all that. And they're still in place. We, we've evolved. It's grown. Mm -hmm. But um, what we put into place that first year. And I, we just were creating a conference, and it wasn't until I remember getting up at the first night and saying, welcome to the first annual. And the words just came out of my mouth. It's kind of like spirit talking. Like I was going, like, okay, I get the message. You know, this, is, <laughs> this is more than just a conference. Uh -huh. And um, so we continued planning each year. And with it, our first year was maybe 24 events. Within three years, I think we had 75 within five years, it was 90 events. It was eight days long. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was quite an endeavor. Lots of people involved. It was all volunteers. I mean, I worked for the church. And um, it was quite an amazing time when we had that time together. We just walked into the church. We, we recreated the church into a, like a feminine temple. Right. And yeah. um, we we just created this whole atmosphere of, of, and men were included too. We had men were um, open to come to the evening events and we had a lot of evening mm -hmm. events of lectures and concerts and very fun things like that. And, and so we just created this environment where women could come and, and what grew out of that is what has made it so powerful. I mean, it was a place where women's stories could be heard, where women could be supported and they were witnessed and they made powerful changes in their life. I mean, you know, so, you know, that was it from day one. It was all about women telling their stories. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That's a great story with, you know, all of the various visions and voices that kind of came to you 
um, almost as premonitions that led you to then this creation. When you started out, you actually thought about bringing women spiritual leaders. Um, what were you looking for when you first started with the ministers at Unity? Well, actually, the ministers, they just said, go for it. I, I created <laughs> it and got the team together. So we just started, we started researching. There was a book, uh, a resource guide for women's spirituality, and kind of went a different direction. There was a lot of women that are in the women's movement and the goddess movement and the feminist women's spirituality movement, if you call it, that had done a lot of work. And so we just started researching people, and I, I talked to various people. I talked to Sherry Anderson, who had written the book that had inspired me. Actually, the people who were in that book aren't people that we brought, necessarily. Oh, mm -hmm. They're not necessarily famous known people. I mean, I, I suppose I have to go back and check out on that, who, what people are in that book. But mm -hmm. our first year we brought people, we had Vicki Noble and we had Louisa Tish and, and um, Myra Craighead who's this fabulous artist that draws the feminine images and she's just fabulous. And so we, and then we also, one of the things that we instigated in that first year that we still do is we brought, because we couldn't afford to bring Mm -hmm. everybody be famous people, it's expensive, so we really had to look at that. So it was a balance of, it was one wise woman told me, bring some local people. Right. So we put out a call, and, we, and she gave me some names, and we put out a call for uh, some presenters that were from Seattle area. Mm -hmm. And and that's a great way to have a conference, because you really tap into your community, and you're really honoring, there's many women leaders that aren't famous, right. or have right. written books, and so we have a balance of, we bring a few nationally best-selling authors and then we bring a lot of local people mm -hmm. and there's people from come from out of state who come because they've heard of Women of Wisdom they want to participate they come on their own and so we have a lot of varying um, and, and diversified topics so we have a we really explore a lot of different things and mm -hmm. and there's something for everyone because you can just flip through the brochure especially when it was eight days and you you've got I must I don't know I can't even count 60 <laughs> workshops to choose from right. there's so many different topics that um, you'd have to be missing something if you couldn't find something that was right. of interest to you. So mm -hmm. it was a really exciting time. We've had to step back from that now. It's, there's just no way that we can do eight days. It's, it's immense planning and um, it was an amazing time and, and it really allowed for all that growth and, and people developing their passions and changing their lives. But we found still going to a smaller format. We now do three and a half days, almost four days. And people still go into those depths and explore mm -hmm. topics and, and have that powerful gathering together. And it's, it's still just as, as impactful. Right. And it's more manageable for us to, <laughs> to plan. We are not don't have the funds to pay people to manage something like that mm -hmm. um, all week long. Right. So. Well, I mean, your energy really describes how that actually all, that kind of bubbling energy happens at these gatherings. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's seven or eight days or three or four days, these full of these conferences with opening and concluding uh, uh, plenaries and then sessions in between, also evening um, coming together um, along with men and creativity. The part about the um, feminine temple um, at the church, the using drama and using art to create that. That's evident not only in the conferences, but I think it comes through in your book. Too. Yes, there's lots of art. Yes, yeah, so you use yeah. a lot of um, art, and then also just that it's you know also cursive writing, um, all of that stuff. I think that's really weaved in beautifully, and probably that's what led to some of the awards too. Yes, I, I, it's, it's what I wanted. I'm, I'm very pleased with how the book turned out, and I've had people who participated in the conference who have said, oh, it's a great memoir, and I've had people who have not been to the conference and feel like they walked into the conference. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to portray. It's, it's like we enter, you you walk through, and I, I describe um, in one of the beginning chapters com coming to the opening ceremonies and mm -hmm. what that's like. And stories are woven in, in the book and art and poetry, and, and that's what Woman Wisdom is about. It's, it's the full exploration of the Divine Feminine. It's using all our senses and the, the phys you know, all the workshops we bring are the physical, the mental, the spiritual, emotional. We try to balance all those, those out in mm -hmm. different, different ways. And so, yeah, we've had art, we've had art shows. We have a goddess market with lots of um, vendors, artisans who create their own art. Um, it, it's an amazing week to um, come in and explore from many different angles what it is that 
to be a woman yeah. these days. Right. And that having the art there is, is just so fabulous, yeah, you know, too. Yeah, yeah. And so that's in the book. Because many of our artists that have been at Woman of Wisdom, where they've had a booth or they've been in the art show, their art is in the book.